Praise God. Every day, your name is the same. Hallelujah. Sometimes all you got to do is call that name. Hallelujah. I appreciate and bless the Lord for being in the house of God once again. Amen. Glory be unto thy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's just so good to be in the house of the Lord. As was mentioned earlier, so many folk did not wake up this morning, but he spared us another day. And we can say one more time, I'm glad to be in your house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is so wonderful, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Praise God for coming out today. Amen. I tell you, the Lord is mighty good, saints. He's mighty good. And we're going to learn how to treat him like he's mighty good. Because he don't treat us like we treat him. That's how good he is. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But we're going to get there. Hallelujah. Now, I thank God for all of you that's online. Praise God watching as well. The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, is wherever you allow him to dwell. Praise God. If you honor him and invite him, he'll be right there in the midst. And that song says, Jesus, your name is the same. Every day. Your name is the same. I am just excited, but y'all know that every time I get to the house of God, I'm excited anyway, because I understand and I appreciate God for life, health, and strength, because it does not have to be, but because of his grace and his mercy, yet another day has he spared us. And because he spared me, I've got to bless his name. I've got to give him glory and honor and thank him. Praise God, because it's in him that I live, move, and have my being. Praise God. We're getting ready to go. Um, those that are standing, if you have your Bibles, we ask that you would uh, stand. And I want to read a couple of passages of scripture. Praise God. The first is in First Chronicles, the 12th chapter. Praise God. And I want to start down at verse 8. First Chronicles chapter 12, beginning at verse 8. And I'll be reading the New King James Version. Some Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Praise God. And I want to go to another passage of scripture over it in Genesis. Praise God. Chapter 49. Praise God. Beginning at verse 1. Genesis 49 verse 1. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed, and you defiled it, and he went up to my couch. And in that same chapter, I want to, um, let's see here. Uh, verse 19 in the same chapter. Gad, a troop shall tramp upon you, but he shall triumph at last. Praise God. Let us go before the Lord in a word of prayer at this time. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered and that the word will fall on good soil 
that it may take root and bring forth fruit that you desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you for being Lord and Savior and all that you have done. We give you thanks and all that you're about to do. God, we give you thanks now for we yield the service into your hand that it may flow by your Holy Spirit, that you do what you will as you will in the mighty name of Jesus. And we render the tactics of the enemy null and void right now for he shall not be able to hinder that which you desire, but it will come forth for thy glory. In Jesus' name, we thank thee and declare it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. And I studied this and, and read this and, and went back through this particular passage of Scripture. But in my spirit, praise God, what I want to do is share with you some characters of a winner. Praise God. Traits of a winner, of, of a winner. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of you out there are winners? Amen. Praise God. All right. All right. I see the hands going up. You must see yourself as a winner when you are a child of the king. Because the word has already told us that we win. We already know we win. But that some things that you got to understand being a winner, praise God, because when you are a winner, praise God, you got to have certain traits because everybody is not a winner. First of all, because they don't see themselves as a winner. But a winner needs to be encouraged also. But not only do they need to be encouraged, but winners encourage others as well. Right. So it's a two-way street that should tell us something. We should be encouraging one another as we walk. Now, in the times that we live in now, praise God, amen, in the time that we live in right now, a whole lot of encouragement is needed. A whole lot. Because every time you turn around, somebody is doing something or the government or somebody is legislating or attempting to legislate something to take control and mess up our lives. Amen. And to keep us from pursuing that that we desire to pursue with setting a lot of roadblocks. But a winner, don't let that stop them. A winner has determination. And if we go over and look like we just read here in uh, First Chronicles, praise God, uh, that eighth verse down there, it says that uh, the middle ways of that verse, it says, men, they were mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces was like the faces of lions. And were as swift as gazelles. Now a lion, if you notice, if you look at the movies or you've been to the zoo, the lion eyes is directly in front. That line is looking straight ahead. It's like that line got laser focus. And when that line, being that it is a predator, whatever it's getting ready to go at, its eyes is not getting off of this target. Winners have to have a laser focus. We as believers, praise God, our focus needs to be on the word of God. We can't go to the left, we can't go to the right, but we go straight to the word of God. And when we see that word, that is what keeps us on track. Because that lion is not going to take its eyes off of its prey. Because it's focused on it, and its goal is to have lunch. Praise God. He going to have some lunch. So he ain't taking his eyes off because he don't want the prey to get away. The word of God tells us that we press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. God has a calling on every one of our lives. Don't mean that your calling may be in the pulpit or actually a preacher, 
but you've got a calling, even if it's just to encourage somebody, smile at them, give them a hug, give them a handshake. Everybody has a calling because God said, I knew your beginning from the end. Or I knew your end from the beginning. Before we ever hit this earth, purpose was already in place. God has put it in us. And then when we came here, he expected us to begin to walk it out. So we've got to be like that line and stay laser focused on the target. And it says in here that you have faces like a line. Because see, a line ain't deterred by what they see. Because they're not looking at all the stuff to the left and right. They're looking at what they're getting ready to eat. We as children of God, we don't need to be so concerned about what's happening here, what's happening there. But where is God directing us? What did God speak to us? And that that he spoke to us, that is where we need to remain focused on. And as I read these passages of scripture, I'm going to use some of them as examples because there's principles found in these scriptures. They may seem a little bit outside, but the principle from the word is for our everyday living. Praise God. And it said that they had to be swift like gazelles. And in our term, that would be like a deer. Because you know a deer is pretty fast. It don't play. It can leap. It can take off like a jet. That's how fast a deer is. And if we go back to the word of God and think about it, you remember the story of Joseph was a young guy and he had this dream about what was going to be taking place in the future and shared it with his family. And it created a whole lot of jealousy. Praise God, because he said in the dream, he saw them bowing down to him and they like, you the youngest, we don't, and we're going to bow to you. And even when he shared it with his parents, he was saying the same thing. But he didn't have the fullness of it at that time. But what God was preparing him and showing him, this dream is where I'm taking you. But even though he had that dream, praise God, he had to go through some things before it ever came to pass. What am I saying? We know the story. His brothers got jealous. They were going to kill him. But one of the younger ones saved the other brothers from killing him and said, nah, let's don't kill him. Let's just put him in a pit. And then, you know, hoping that he was going to get out. But the brother at Reuben, that, that Benjamin that, that, that said, let's don't kill him, you know, he was hoping that when they went on, he was going to be able to go back and pull him up out in the pit so he could go on because it was his brother. But the other brothers, they were so jealous, they didn't mind killing him because the daddy showed favor towards him by getting him that coat of many colors, and that just stirred up everything right there in itself. Because, see, there's nothing worse than jealousy and en envy because that stuff will drive you to do things you know you should not do. Praise God. But nevertheless, as we know, the story sped along, and, and Joseph began to grow, and he ended up in Egypt. Praise God. The least or the youngest, praise God. And when he got there in Egypt, we know the story. Praise God. That's why it said you got to be swift like the gazelles or like the, the, uh, the deer in our term. Praise God. Potiphar's wife, praise God, looked at Joseph. And, and according to the word of God, he was uh, pleasant to look upon and, and all of that. And so she wanted to sleep with him. Praise God. And so she lured him into the bedroom and was trying to get him to sleep with her, But he knew it was not right because he had been entrusted by uh, the um, Pharaoh, praise God, to be in charge of everything. And that Pharaoh even made him charge over all except his wife, praise God, and let his folk know that, that uh, Joseph is in charge. He the second in command, praise God. And when she tried and he would not, it, the word said three times, she kept trying to lure him and lure him. And so he would not sleep with her, and he made it known that that was not right. And praise God and how he was trusted by Pharaoh, and he just got on up out of there. And when he tried to run up out of there, she grabbed hold of his cloak that he had on, and it, the word of God said it ripped. So she ended up with it in her, her hand, praise God, and he just had the piece that did not 
part of it torn. She had the piece that was torn in her hand. And then when her husband come on, praise God, she going to go in there and lie to him and said that that uh, Egyptian you brought up in this house tried to have his way with me. And when I screamed, he took off and, and, and left. Right. Pharaoh wasn't too happy about that. But first of all, he kind of had a little bit trouble believing because he knew of Joseph's integrity and how diligent he was, but yet this was his wife telling him the story and she had a piece of the garment. But guess what? You know, even though she had a piece of the garment and she lied on him, praise God, and Pharaoh had him thrown in prison, but because he was on a mission to fulfill the destiny that God has set in his life, even when he got in prison, praise God, he found favor in the prison. What am I saying? A winner does not lose sight of where they're going. Now, there may be a lot of obstacles and a lot of things in the process that tries to block and say you can't get it. But a winner knows I can and they don't give up on the dream and the vision or the destiny that God has placed in their heart. Praise God. You can't give up on your dreams. A winner, a winner does not stop. Praise God. But a loser, they just kind of say, well, I try. And they give up. Because this. The inside. You know what God has spoke to you. Now, it's all right for somebody to give you confirmation. But you know, some folk, what they do is they go around and get somebody to confirm what they want, not what God says. And then they feel all right. But let me tell you, on the inside, your spirit ain't going to have no rest. It might give you temporary relief, but it's coming back again. Because God put it in us, and we've got a destiny that we must fulfill, and we cannot stop because of the obstacles that's placed in front of us. Now, she got a piece of the garment, but the other piece was on his uh, shoulder, I guess. So what is that is saying to us, I might have to lose some things along the way. But all that I lost because I'm fulfilling the call that God placed there, will be well worth it when I get to the will that God has for my life. See, we feel like because we're in Christ that everything's supposed to be Sunday. Or every day Sunday and everything like ice cream and cake. Don't work like that. When you make up your mind, you're getting ready to walk in what God called you to do. And you're getting ready to represent you just upset hell. And the devil release every imp he got to try to discourage you, turn you around, because he knows the danger that you will be to his kingdom. Because his goal is to make sure hell is overflowing. And if you walking in where God has called you for your destiny, you're going to really snatch some of them souls that was on the way to hell. They're going to get turned around, and then they're going to be building the kingdom of God instead of the kingdom of hell. And the devil knows it. But nevertheless, while he was there, he got favor, praise God, and got promoted and went back and got delivered because of the ability that God gave him. All I'm sharing with you is there's times you're in positions you got to get out in the way. You cannot stay in a situation that you know is not good for you. That's why sometimes you got to let folk go. I don't care how much you like them. Because they're not right for you. And your association is causing you to hinder what God is trying to do in your life. You can respect them and, and, and speak to them afar. But you realize I cannot just get so connected that I got to stay in their midst. Because a winner learns how to separate themselves from those that don't see the vision that is there. Because they realize that if you're not there to help me get to my journey, you just extra weight. 
And because you extra weight, I wave at you. Shake your hand. But you can't have my time. <laughs> because I got somewhere to go. And you ain't trying to go there. And so since you're not trying to go, I can't let you stop me. Because I know what the call is on me. We have to have that focus like God is giving us. Amen. Amen. And so nevertheless, Joseph exemplified how you just got to run sometimes. You know, for our young folk and old folk too. Sometimes you, 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 you got company and you know, and y'all go places and they decide, well, you know, let's do this and let's do that. You already know mm, we don't need to be doing that. And you just have to go on and, and, and be who God called you to be and say, you might, but I ain't. And if they keep insisting, you need to just get on up and go on about your business. If you need to get out in the car and call uh, Lyft or Uber or whoever you need to call, you need to go on where you need to go. <laughs> ain't no need to sit in there trying to tell me, I got it, I got it. No, nah, no, nah, you ain't. Because you, 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 you rest. And the next thing you know, even though it won't your intentions, you done ended up where you didn't want to be. A lot of folk hooked on drugs, got tired with the habit because they were with so-called friends. And because they wanted to fit in, knowing that they shouldn't, they wanted to participate so it would look like they were cool too. And as a result of that, that, that habit became a part and they continue to process and, and participate. And then it got to the point that it got out of control. There's times when you got to run and you need to understand it ain't nothing wrong with running. Praise God. But now as I get back to this story here, because we're talking about the traits of a winner. When you're a winner, you got to remember this is how a winner acts. A winner does not let obstacles and everything, anything else stop them from where they are going and what they know that they should be doing. Yes, they're going to get some bumps and bruises, but they have worked out and they're disciplined enough, praise God, that they can go push through that. Because the body gets tired and says, whew, I don't work hard enough now, I need to sit down, but they, they push to get that second win. Because as they keep pressing, it's like a, a second sense of energy boost in and, and push them just a little bit further. Because a winner is focused on where they are going. Now, what I want to do is look at uh, Genesis the um, 49th chapter. Praise God. And in Genesis 49th chapter, praise God, where Jacob began to speak to his son Reuben. When he spoke to Reuben, praise God, because he was bringing them in to give them his final words before he got ready to leave to speak into their lives on what was going to be. Praise God. He told Reuben, he said, now listen, you were my firstborn. You was my might and the beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity and of power. But you unstable as water and you shall not excel because you went up to your father's bed. If you know the history, Reuben decided that he was going to sleep with one of the, his father's uh, heron or whatever the women they had. Because, you know, back then they had more than one wives and all that. So he went in and decided he was going to sleep with one of them. And now as he's getting his final word, his daddy is telling him, he said, man, you had it all in you. You were my firstborn, my strength, the beginning of my strength and my power. But he said, you're unstable like water. And everybody know about water. Water will conform to whatever you put it in. If you put water in the refrigerator, it's going to get cold. If you put water in a pot and turn up the heat, it's going to get hot. If you put it in the freezer, it's going to freeze and become ice. But if you take it out of the freezer and put it in the heat or just set it out it's going to dissolve and come back water in other words water is not stable it's subject to change as the condition change and so what we as the people of God has to understand and as winners 
We do not allow conditions to cause us to change. But what we do is change the conditions. And he told him, he said, man, you had it in you, but you, you just won't stay. But you were like water. Whichever way it flowed, that's the way you went. You had no control. We as believers got to learn how to exercise a little bit of control. And as we begin to see in this, as things went on, and later on in verse 19, he spoke to Gad, which was one, he says, that was a troop shall tramp upon him, but he shall triumph at last. What he was telling Gad, he says, now, there are going to be some enemies that's going to come against you, but in the end, you're going to triumph over them. He was letting them know you're going to have some battles, and it's going to look like you lost, but in the end, you actually won. Because you're going to overcome and turn around and do the attack. Now, where I wanted it to bring all of this into as I bring this thing near in here is out of Joshua, praise God, the 22nd chapter, praise God, where it begins to, to talk about. Because see, what happening is as the children of Israel was going on to uh, the promised land, Reuben and Gad, they became buddies. In other words, both of their tribes decided they were going to work with each other. And on the way to the promised land, Canaan, they hung together for them 40 years while they was going through the wilderness. Everybody got people they hook up with. Somebody going to influence somebody. But nevertheless, as they were going to Canaan land, God had promised them to the Canaan land. And they was on the way to Canaan as they was passing through on their way. The word of God says on the east side of Jordan, before they got ready to cross the Jordan to go into Canaan, uh, Reuben said, Whew, we like this land. This land is good for grazing and all of that. And so our cattle and our sheep and all of this good stuff, this will be perfect for them. We, we think we just stay on this side and not go to Canaan land. They were God's children. I was taking them to the promised land, but on the way to the promised land, they looked over there and saw the other land. <laughs> they said, we like this. This is good enough for us. What is that showing us? Do we not see that in today's time? The principle behind that is we know what God says in his word. We know how he has declared and called us the head and not the tail. But, you know, as we make that journey uh, going on with the Lord, things seem to be okay. We get a little bit comfortable. And you say, well, God, I know, I know that's okay. But you know what? I'm all right right here. I'm saved. As long as I can make it in, I'll be all right because my goal is to get into heaven. Now, there's a little bit of danger in that because that is not God's best. That is not the will of God. That's not the center of his will. But you are his child, and he put in us free will. But you know, and God's people know, that have spoke into your life where you should be going, what you should be doing, but you comfortable because you got to a point, I'm all right, right here. But now the, 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 the thing with that is, and, and, and just so y'all know, Joshua, the 22nd chapter, verses 30 through 34, because see, when they was getting ready to go into the Canaan land, you got to understand, God has spoke to Moses and all and told him how they were going to divide the land up and, and which tribes was going to get this portion and which tribe was going to get that part. And so since they were going to Canaan and uh, Reuben and Gad, they happened to see that this is a pretty good area for all of our sheep and cattle and all that good stuff on this east side of the Jordan. Somebody got to get the land. So we're going to Moses and talk to him and tell him, let us have this part 
for us and y'all going to Cain. Moses said to them, and it was probably a misunderstanding because what he thought was, okay, y'all saying y'all don't want to go to the Canaan land with your other brothers. You want to stay here on this side instead of crossing over into Canaan land. So they come back and they said, that ain't quite the case. He said, because you're getting ready to do just like your forefathers and all of them did before by being disobedient and not listening to what God said and he had to wipe them out. Now you're getting ready to hinder your brothers that's trying to get into the Canaan land because you don't want to go over and help them cross over because they're going to, even though I'm taking them to Canaan land, they're going to have some enemies to fight when they get to Canaan land, but I've already given them the land. They got the battle, but because you are part of this clan and you're going to say, y'all go, we're going to stay no, we need you to go and help fight as well to get rid of the enemy. You are being disobedient to God. And then they said, no, 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 that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is this part of the land, and I'm breaking it down so we can understand it. But when you go read that chapter, Joshua 22, you're going to find it around 30 verse, you know, but either better to read the whole story because y'all know how they write in the Old Testament. <laughs> so in other words, they said, no, we will go but what we want to do is because this land we feel is right for our animals and all of that good stuff and our tribe, we want to build a pen and leave our wives and all that here. But we're going to go with the rest to help them fight. And we won't come back until we help our brothers secure their spot in Canaan. And so what he told them was, he said, okay, so you saying you're going to go? and help your brothers cross over into Canaan land, praise God, and you're willing to help them fight the enemy that's coming before them and obey God, but you want to have that portion for yourself. So what he says is if you do what you said you're going to do, I'll go ahead and grant that to you. But if you don't honor what you said, God will destroy you just like he did your forefathers that disobeyed. But if you honor what you say, then we will allow you to do that. In the church, there are folk that will support the work of the ministry and do everything to a certain degree to make sure that it gets where it needs to go and what it needs. But they themselves are not quite willing to get the hands on. But they, they, they want to see the ministry and the church get to where it needs to go. So they're going to support and work to help it get there, but they just don't want to commit themselves but so far. That's where we get in on that fine line, praise God. That comes between the committed member and the one that's just on the road. Now, remember, as he was, as he was sharing with them, because you got to remember in the Old Testament, when they got over into the Canaan land, the temple was set up on that side. The ark of God was with them in the Canaan land because that was the promised land that he was giving them. Now, Old Testament... The ark is where God dwelled. So the presence of the Lord represented was in that ark. But if you're on the east side of Jordan and the ark over there in Canaan land, you don't have the presence of God dwelling where you are. Now, we as New Testament believers, Christ dwells in us. And they may mention in the word as you begin to, to read further into that chapter, that they were still covenant brothers. In other words, they were still part of the family of God, but they chose not to go all the way and be in Canaan where God's presence was. But what they said we'll do, we'll make us a replica of the altar and put it on the east side of Jordan because we don't want 
the ones that committed, as they get older and their children come along, because y'all know in the Old Testament, they fought all the time. So we don't want them to forget that we still brothers. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make us a replica of this altar on the east side of the Jordan. So if they decide they're going to have to fight against the enemy and come over, they're going to recognize this altar because it looks like the altar that they have over in Canaan land. And they will remember that we are brothers so that they won't fight against us. Ain't that something? You acknowledge it's going to be a replica. I understand God's presence, actual presence ain't here. But here's something that looked like his presence is here. They're on the east side with the enemy. Too easy to blend in with the enemy. And it gave the enemy easy access because, see, the ark of God was not on the east side. It was in Canaan land. And so when the enemy wanted to come on in against them, it was easy to, to pull them to their, their side and, and kind of mix in with their culture and all of that good stuff. But yet they were still covenant brothers. What am I saying in today's term? You a believer if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your faith is in him. But there's a difference in being committed and moving into what God has for you than just being in the family. And we got folk in the church because things are okay. They know they're saved. They know we can go to heaven. They thinking like Reuben and Gad now. We, we just going to stay. Because this is pretty good where we're at. So we're going to stay over here. Y'all go on to Canaan land. But just remember, we still your brothers. And they are flirting around with the world. They are blending in with the world. That's why when folk is around church folk, it's hard to tell who's church and who's in the world because they fit right in. There is no distinguishing. But yet, God says we're saved by grace, not by our words. So if we trust and believe what his words say, we are part of the family. But we are missing out on what God wants to do for us. Because we are outside of where his presence is operating. But yet we're still in the family. Winners don't skirt around their training and all of that. Winners is wanting to excel and do even better. Even when they hit their goal, they still working to see, can I go to the next level? God is looking for a committed set of folk that don't mind pushing and reaching so he can begin to show himself to you as being mighty as he had mentioned in his word. Folk want to sit back and look and talk about the church. The church ain't doing this and the church ain't doing that. What are you doing? Because if you're talking like that, that is automatically speaking that you are looking at people instead of looking at God. Instead of seeing what this word says. And that song sung earlier, I can't answer for nobody but me. You can't answer for me and I can't answer for you. It ain't the church as God's church. It's the people that want what they want and want things to be like they want instead of what God says he wants. But because of God's grace and God's mercy, you're still going to experience some blessings, but you will not get God's best. You won't see the power and the miracles that the Bible has placed because there is no commitment. It ain't the church. It's us in exercising what God has put in us. We walk by faith and not by sight. 
So I say to you, if you are a winner, then get your eyes off the people, get your eyes in the word. And when we get our eyes in this word, instead of talking like the world, we will begin to see what God says about us and we will begin to speak what God says about us, not what we feel. See, while that, that uh, winner is training, their body saying, oh, you can't do it. But because they are a winner and they desire to win, they said, oh, yes, you can. And they keep right on going, even though somebody over there said, man, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's almost like they close their ears and keep going because you got to shut out all the distractions and all of the noise and everything else that you're hearing. Because anytime you start out to accomplish anything, you got the naysayers out there. You got the folk looking in the natural that's, that's got the intellect or whatever. Praise God telling you according to this theory and that theory, this won't work, that won't work. But if folk listen to the naysayers, you'll never be what God called you to be. The fault is not with God, but the fault is with his people not willing to commit, but just go along. But yet, they recognize. They said, this is going to be the distinction. You get upset and jealous and say, well, it looked like uh, favoritism is going on in the church. They're always calling on so-and-so. I don't know. You know why they're calling on so-and-so? Because they're willing and ready. When they call on you, Oh, uh, let me think about it now. I, I'll get back to you. Because you ain't ready to make that commitment because you're thinking about, well, I got this going on. I got that going on. I... No, nah, let me get back to you. But yet you to be the first one to complain about the one that's doing a whole lot of things. That's because they willing. And the leaders sometimes, they love everybody, but they ain't got time to spend over here with folk that don't want to go nowhere. As they say, I can put the food down there, but it's up to you whether you want to eat it. You got the food just like everybody else got. It's what you do with it after you get it. We got the word. Ain't nobody stop you if you get into this word. Because the Bible says study to show yourself approved a workman unto God that needeth not be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. All I can do is encourage. But I know I got some winners. But I put the traits out there so you can make a decision for yourself and determine if you are a winner. So that when the enemy is causing you to slow down and back up, you can speak to yourself because the Bible says sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. And you got to say, yeah, you don't feel it, but you're going to do it anyway. We're going to praise God. Yeah, you're tired, but you're getting ready to praise God. Because he made me in, in his image. And the word says I was made forth to show praise unto him. And I got breath, so I'm going to praise you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. And a winner understands that. It don't look right, don't feel right, don't even think it's going to work. But because God said it and the word says he's not a man that he shall lie. So I got to make a decision. Do I believe what God says or do I believe what I see? Do I believe what I feel or do I believe what that word says? And if I choose to activate and walk according to that word, God's going to honor his word. And everybody that said it won't work, that's between them and God. But if I believe God's going to work it and stay the course of that word, God will bring it to pass. So all God is saying is, if you are a winner, know how a winner acts and begin to demonstrate the traits of a winner. Don't just skirt around the will of God. 
Go ahead on and make the commitment and say, God, I'm glad. I appreciate you wanting to use me. Because I understand I'm not walking in my own strength, but it's in you that I live, move, and have my being. I got to keep going. I got to keep pressing. I thank God because this word was very encouraging. But you have to read that whole thing to get, get those principles behind me. Who you team up with makes all the difference in the world. One going to influence the other one or vice versa. And if they ain't going on the same mission, you better move another direction. Unless you choose to settle for less. But God's love is so great. You're still yet part of the family, but you're missing out on the greater that he desires to do. But he says it's up to you. You believe my word, walk in it, or you believe my word, but you say I'm okay right where I'm at. I thank you, but I'm, I'm all right right here because I'm comfortable here. But when you're moving and committed to God, he always going to put you somewhere you ain't come. <laughs> That's just where God operates because he needs you to understand it's not you but him. You are dependent on him, not yourself. Because it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. Because we can't do nothing in ourselves. But through Christ, we're able to do all things. Do we feel like it? Absolutely not. But he said it, so we must can do it. So we got to act like it and go on and walk like we can. And as we start walking, we start unfolding and the door opening pages up and touching hearts and, and, and moving by spirit next thing you know you're walking in what God already set there for you but until you started walking you ain't have a clue which way it was going to go and how God was going to do it as I said so many times God reminded me years ago your job is to believe what I say my job is to do it however I want to do it and when I learn, he can do whatever he want to do, however he want to do it. It's up to him. All I need to do is believe he's going to do it and keep going. Who laugh, who care, that's up to them. But I'm going to trust God and let God do what he wants to do. It's his task. If it didn't work out, ain't need me feeling bad about it. As long as I know it was what God said. I'm moving on his word. It's up to him what he do because God's will and his ways is not always our ways or our faults. But he's trying to get us there and the only way he can allow us to get there is to teach us how to trust him in all things. But when we move in faith, he begins to show you more. He's not going to give you no more than you're willing to act on what he already gives you. You can go anywhere you want to go. Ain't going to give you no more than you're going to act on. And the enemy is going to do everything he can to block you to keep you from acting on what you know. Because if you act on what you know, then you're going to want more and you're going to do more. And the next thing you know, more power is working against the enemy. He on his job. We just got to be on ours. As the choir begins to come, we want to bless God for his word. So be a winner. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. And as the choir is preparing to sing a song, if there's one here, you're outside. Praise God. We invite you so that we can share with you the word of God. Praise God. If you got a special prayer request, we invite you as well. If you uh, want to stand where you are. You can go ahead and let your request be made known at the present. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I need you God. to hold my hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. As the choir is singing lowly, praise God, we're going to go before God.
word of prayer. Oh Lord. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we appreciate you for who you are. Father, you know the request. In the mighty name of Jesus, where it was spoken out loud or spoken softly, God, you've heard every request, and we give you that request according to thy word, because you have said, let our request be made known unto you. So we pray that each and every request that have gone before you, that it aligns itself with your will. And because we trust you, God, we give you and we release our wants and our desire to align with that that you desire that you might fulfill the call and the destiny that you have for each and every situation the loved ones that we've lifted up before you God those that we're still waiting on those requests that we say do what you will as you will and let it align with your word because it's our desire God to trust you and to allow you to do that that you will but out of obedience to thy word have we made our request known. But because we know that you see beyond what we can see, and you can see further, we trust you and say you are allowed, and we release our will to align to your will. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate all that you have done, yet done, and all that you're about to do. And for all of those loved ones, God, that we have before you, continue to draw by your spirit that they will yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit because we know that it's your desire that none should perish but that all will come unto repentance into everlasting life God we thank you for it and ask that you continue to draw and allow us to continue to share and follow the leading of your spirit in all that we say and all that we do might represent that that you desire and it will bring glory and honor unto your name we appreciate you for all that you do small and great but even beside what you do god we appreciate you for who you are because who you are makes you worthy of all the praises and glory just for who you are and we thank you god that we will walk by faith and not by sight. We will declare your word and allow that word to come alive on this earth so we may represent you properly as you so desire and win souls unto the kingdom because you love us all and you don't want any loss. But God, you have given us will and freedom to receive or not receive but it's your desire that we would accept the gift of eternal life the salvation that was offered because of the, the work that your son did that you shed the blood sent him to die and hung on the cross and rose again that we might be able to live in the family of god so it's by grace that we are saved not of our words but accepting the work that was done by your son Jesus. We trust in your son's work that he done for us. And we thank you for receiving us into the family of God. Continue to have your way and do what you will as you will. We give thy name the praise, the glory, and the honor and declare to be so. Amen. Praise Amen. God.